Hello, I'm Ward Bell of IdeaBlade with another in a series of videos about the Tempire cocktail reference application. My good friend and colleague Marcel Good is the chief architect and principal maintainer of Cocktail, an open source framework for end-to-end -end development of XAML-based business applications. Marcel gave me a guided tour of the Tempire application and this series is the result. In this episode, we look at the Tempire domain model consisting of code-first entity classes and their domain logic. We mention a few best practices for security, data integrity, and performance, and DevForce figures regularly in the discussion as it's an integral part of the Cocktail application development experience. You can learn more about DevForce at the DevForce Resource Center, but do that later. Even if you don't know a thing about DevForce, you'll have no trouble following our discussion of the Tempire domain model. So let's look uh, at the domain model a little closer. We'll start with uh, a very simple entity. As we said before, we have our model classes here in the domain model. So let's take a quick look at uh, what it looks like. So a simple one here is our address type uh, that just has four properties, essentially, uh, our data. Clearly uh, code first, because it's just got clearly set. Clearly code first. Uh, We'll see here a bit of controlling or control over how you can create it. You notice that the, uh, the constructor is actually internal, so we want to make sure we control how an address type gets created. We don't right, just I'm not going to just be able to new it up. So exactly. We have to go through a factory. Yeah, or you have to go through a factory, or maybe there's business logic around it. Who knows what, right? Similar, we have an internal setter here for the ID. One of the principles of an entity is that the identity shouldn't change, mm. right? Once we have given it an ID, we shouldn't change that. Yep. Um, we certainly don't want to make that public and let the rest of the application change IDs on us. I see. You're using, it's a good, so you want to make sure that it's not uh, generated on the database. You're going to assign it. The client, when it creates one, is going to assign it. Exactly, yeah. Uh, we have some uh, data annotations here that will, since this is code first, right, we give some schema hints uh, here that uh, Entity Framework will use to generate the actual table uh, for us, make sure this field is non-nullable in the database. Uh, and this in turn will factor into the validation, right? The application will actually make sure that there is a name or there is a display name and all that. And I see that you've got um, data members on almost all of them, and that must be because we're using serialization and it's possible to exclude a member uh, from being um, moved over the wire. Yeah, that's correct. It's always safe to be explicit about your data contract and data member, uh, so that if you actually do have a property that you don't want to serialize along, uh, you don't trip over your own feet. Got it. You know, I noticed that uh, you're inheriting from entity base. Yes. So we have uh, a base class that, in fact, uh, all of the entities either directly or indirectly uh, inherit from. So the nice thing about code first is that we can have some common functionality in a base class that's going to apply for all of our entities in the domain model. Mm -hmm. And so if we're looking at it here, we have some of the things you expect from code first, we have our provide entity aspect that mm -hmm. does all, adds all the DevForce goo uh, to this entity. Make sure we, we this is actually an entity from a, from a DevForce perspective. Uh, and because we put this on the base class, I don't have to put it on the derived class. That's it correct. Just shoots on this up. is an inheritable property, so mm -hmm. uh, inheritable attribute, excuse me. So it's automatically uh, everything becomes a DevForce. Well, you've got requires authentication. Yes. So there is, Tempire does worry about security. <laughs> uh, you remember we do have mm -hmm. a security domain model, right? And so what this attribute does is that unless you're an authenticated user, you can't start querying any data. Mm. So we handle that at the very top to make sure you have to be logged in or at least authenticated. Mm -hmm. right? You can obviously fake that, but from a DevForce perspective, you have to be a valid user. Multiple lines of uh, security in yes. there. And this is on the base class, which means, again, any time I create a new entity derived yeah. from this, I get that. Yeah, it's automatically uh, protected. That makes sense. Then we have something called an entity fact. Uh, if you're familiar with the DevForce entity, every DevForce entity has something called an entity aspect, which is all the 
stuff that has nothing to do with your data, right? But it's like the state information, is this a new entity, is it a modified entity, all the things that DevForce needs to manage uh, the entity for you. Right, and, and Entity Aspect allows you to both read facts about the uh, entity and also set things. Yes. And lots it's, of times it, we want to see things, but we don't want consumers of it to be able to, or yeah. to be changing it. It's it's a very powerful uh, object that you can get, and yes, you can be Maybe too powerful. Too powerful. Powerful, yes. So the idea of the entity fact is to wrap the entity aspect and give you controlled access to the good stuff or the safe stuff. The safe in the, stuff. In yeah. the it's all good, aspect. but this it's is all, it's all good. Yeah. And uh, so we can see down here uh, just quickly. It does internally keep an entity aspect. Then it exposes the entity state, which is read only, right? It ex it tells us whether it's a null entity, whether it's a pending entity. So a lot of mostly read only information mm -hmm, that you mm -hmm. can get. Yeah, that's safe for that's our consumers safe. of it to look yeah, at. Yeah, and it does expose the entity aspect as a protected internal. So within your domain model, you can access the entity aspect because you're in charge as, right. as far as the domain model is concerned. Right, but, but if, outside, I'm a, if I'm a view model or something, I shouldn't yes, be messing around You have no business with messing with the entity aspect. That makes good sense. That's correct. And so that's the, that's the entity facts. And then the next one is concurrency, uh, concurrency checking. That's something that's often forgotten, uh, or maybe some of the entities have it, others don't. Mm -hmm. When you do an EDMX, it's very easy to forget. So here with code first, we can handle the concurrency check again in the base class. Every entity is automatically getting concurrency checking turned on. Mm. Then the next one is we have a custom validation method, which is actually empty on the base class, but it, you can overwrite this and add validation logic outside of the DevForce verifiers and, and all that. And we'll see later on that Cocktail actually calls this method for you uh, during a save. Yeah. But it's one way where you can put your validation logic. Got it. And then the last thing is uh, also a DevForce feature, a so-called uh, property interceptor. And this is actually a very uh, global property interceptor that trims every string property for us, right? You don't necessarily want to store white space in the database, mm. uh, trailing or leading white space. So for every entity and every string property, it automatically trims uh, the value that's, that's being assigned to it. Right, right. Yeah, anything of type string is going to uh, is going to be trimmed. Yeah. So no reason to worry about this uh, in any of the other uh, entities. So that's the entity base. Uh, then additional stuff we find in here is uh, another code first artifact, uh, our DB context. That's the entity framework DB context. That's right? the entity framework uh, DB context, that's correct. Uh, so DevForce actually gives you the ability to use entity framework code first to its fullest. And uh, so we do want to control a bit more how our uh, domain model is actually going to be mapped to, to the database. So we have our entity sets, so we're, we're telling Entity Framework what our various entity sets are. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also have some strategy that we're setting up in our constructor how we want the database to be initialized. So we actually have our own DB initializer that we find down here. Uh, and really the only thing different from the default, well, first of all, we're using the drop create if the model changes. Now this is dangerous in production, yeah, yeah. but this very handy for very, development. Very handy here for development. Yeah. Uh, you would not uh, do this in production. That's correct, yeah. And then really on top of that is we have some seeding, right? So if the database does get dropped and recreated, it's going to be empty, obviously, right? Not mm -hmm. very useful. So uh, we want to seed it with data. And this is how we get Steven and all the guys we're familiar with yeah. every time we run the, the database. Exactly. I run the application. And I, and I guess it just makes it safe to, to, if you mess up your database, you can just clear the decks by deleting yeah. it and letting you it. You can delete it, it gets recreated. All right. Yeah. That, that's good. That's great for development, not something you'd have in production. That's correct, yeah. 
And the other thing is we turn off EF validation. Mm. That force takes control mm -hmm. of the validation. We don't need the overhead of EF to validate everything again right. that we just validated. That's just a good practice. And the model creating is where you can control some more fluent how you want your model right, to be this is the mapped. Standard That's the standard place. Uh, and typically, you find that in our documentation. If you do have a DB context, the first thing you'd need to do is ignore the entity aspect. Right, right. Yeah, that's a really critical step. If you leave that out, it don't work. Yeah. Besides the DB context, uh, we also have a strongly typed uh, entity manager just for our convenience. Uh, so we get these nice uh, base query uh, entity queries uh, for all of our entity sets. So we don't have to try and figure out what the base query is for the individual classes. Got it. Nothing special about this uh, at all. And then lastly, to point out, we have the metadata here, our code first metadata that that force uh, generates. Uh, you don't really have to do much with this. That's just the bookkeeping for that force, all the information around your entities so it knows what to do when you query something, when you save it, and et cetera. Could you go back to the DB context for a second? Yes. Uh, right at the top of the class, we have a data source key name, Tampire Entities. Yeah. What's that going to do for us? That's our mapping to the connection string. Ah. So when we are starting to query, that force needs to know where to query from. And by providing this attribute, we tell it what connection string should it look for in the web config uh, or with the uh, data source uh, resolver in, in that force. But this is the key that represents the physical database. Then one additional thing uh, we want to show here is the projections folder. Uh, there is a POCO here. If we remember the, the master detail screen in Tempire, the grid on top is actually populated not by entities, but by a projection query. So we kind of get a summary view of the entities for performance reasons, and also it's, it's a grid that maybe needs to do some calculations. So that you're, you're just sort of cherry picking a thing, uh, bits and pieces out yeah. of the object graph around a person, a, a staff resource. Correct. And condensing all the information, getting just what you want to present, and then sending it yeah. down. And this is kind of like a, uh, we call that a projection. We call it a projection. And this is it's a strongly uh, typed version yeah. of it's it. It's a strongly typed version of it. It has this high known type, so that force will discover it and knows what this type is all about and make sure the serializer can actually serialize this object. Uh, back and forward from the server to the client. And it's read-only, and we're not going to update this thing. It's read-only uh, because it's a grid. Uh, the grid is populated, is essentially the search result. We're just uh, displaying data. Yeah. Nice. And it, if we can see, it basically just dis displays partial information uh, of the entity, first name, middle name, last name, the main address, zip code, city, right. all that. So and that could be from all the grid. related, and it could just all be yep. pushed in here. Yep. Got it. Got it. You know, that, that would make an app much faster. So I think that's all I want to show uh, about the uh, domain model. That's a brief tour of the domain model. I should mention that although Tempire has a code first model with POCO classes, your cocktail application could be written database first and would only differ in a few details from the model you saw here. In the next video, Marcel and I move on to the domain services project, which provides, well, services relating to creating, querying, and saving model entities. You'll find this domain services video and much more at cocktail.ideablade.com.